Hi everybody, my name is Dan. Welcome back to the Camera, Computer, and Tech Review Show. It's going to be a little bit of a shorter show today. I'm not actually sure because I haven't actually recorded yet, so I'm just going to say that. Maybe I'll cut it out. I don't know. Whew. Lots of Canon uh, news in the news. That's a weird way to say it. But there's lots of Canon stuff, and I'm going to just mainly go over Canon stuff today. There's a little bit of uh, AMD news. So first off, we have uh, Canon R1 rumors and also news of uh, Canon R5C, which is a cinema camera version of the Canon R5, which a lot of people should be happy with. But there's also some Canon firmware updates for some of the full frame and other cameras that they have out. I think mainly the full frame. So uh, let's get into it. First off, I just want to mention that if you haven't subscribed, how about clicking that red subscribe button down below, hit the like for the video, hit some other likes too. You know, I could really use it. The algorithm could use it. Let's me know that I'm there. let uh, helps me uh, get this channel off the ground and everything. And uh, that would just be great. It'd be fantastic if you guys could support me and so many people have so far already and it's been great. Honestly, I just don't even know what to expect with any of this, but I'm just going to keep plugging away and keep at it anyway because it's a lot of fun. I love doing this. Making videos for people, is uh, doing music videos and other things. I'm just going to keep at it, man. I know this isn't a music video, but whatever. So first off, yeah, okay, the second off, I should say. Ding! We got the Canon R1 rumors. Some of the big things about the rumored specs, obviously it's going to be an RF mount, 85 megapixel, possibly global shutter, 60 frames per second of 8K, 120 frames per second of 4K, and then you got all the other juicy, I think it's gonna have 240 frames of uh, 1080p, or that might come in a later firmware update, but we'll have to see. There's lots of other good uh, juicy things about it too. ISO should be about, what is it, 160 to 1.6 million, a little over 1.6 million. And we all know ISO is a little subjective. It can change a little bit from camera to camera. It's not exactly the international standards organization thing that it should be, but I don't know why. And anyway, yeah, it should have an excellent uh, full screen, uh, what was it, autofocus point should be all over the place, all over the screen. There was like many of them. Quad pixel autofocus, that's what they're calling it. I'm trying to look up my notes here and be kind of nonchalant without anybody noticing. I don't have a teleprompter, so I like to just kind of get it in my head, you know what I mean, and then read from the heart. And I try to get as many facts in my memory. I do digress though. Better watch out for that. But I do have notes. And every now and then I'm going to glance down and look at the list. You can't memorize everything. And I don't have enough funds to buy a teleprompter. But I'm still getting pretty good at this, I think. If you see my last one, that was my very first show. And I feel like I didn't even really look down that much, like here and there. But, hey. So it should have like 15.5 stops at dynamic range. That was another thing too. Plus the 5 access in-body image stabilization. That, that should give it a roughly, they're saying about nine stops of active Im image stabilization. So that's pr pretty good if they can manage to achieve that. I think that's excellent news for us all. But I don't know, these are rumored specs, so let's not get too excited. It should have a 3.5 inch OLED screen with like 9.33 million dots. That's a lot. 12 point something nit brightness, 12.5 nit brightness. That's pretty good, eh? And uh, the, it has an EVF of uh, 9.4... Yeah. Electronic. Electronic viewfinder should be about 9.44 megapixels. And both viewfinders, the LCD and the electronic viewfinders, on the rumored specs are to be 120 hertz. So that gives you a nice uh, refresh rate. That's uh, more than my monitor that I'm using has. So that's pretty cool. And the rumored price for this camera is about 8,500. Now this thing should be going up against the Sony A1, I would believe, because, you know, this is the, the specs, like the, the A1 is actually kind of in the same price range, around the $8,000 mark. And it has a lot of the same features, can record unlimited. That's what the R1, the big hype, is that it will be able to record unlimited 8K, 60 frames per second, and uh, all these other things like with a huge megapixel massive burst rate shooting of like 
30 frames per second at like a, maybe a lower megapixel rate, I think, and then a slightly higher megapixel rate for slightly less frames per second, like 20 frames per second at like 50 megapixels or something like that. So there's a lot of good promise for these cameras. Like the Sony A1 is really impressing people with this high burst rate, being able to keep focus on the eyes and all that stuff. And a lot of people are really enjoying the Canon R5 for a lot of these features as well. So I'm not exactly sure what the huge difference is between the R1 and the R5, but then there's the R5C. Let's get into that for a second. The Canon R5C should be a lot like the Canon R5, only the Canon R5C will have a built-in fan and the limited recording times will be gone. And uh, I believe there's also a firmware update, wink wink, coming out that should bring the 1080p up to 240 frames per second as well. So there's a lot to love about Canon's new firmware updates, which I'll get into in a minute. So the, the Canon R5C is pretty much gonna be identical to the R5, only a little bit bigger of a body because it's gonna have a fan. The Canon R5C should also have the same image sensor as the Canon R5. The Canon R5C should also still be a hybrid camera and be great for shooting stills as well and uh, probably won't make you feel left out if that's what you're into. And the Canon R5C should be hitting the market sometime towards the end of this year, in the fall or something like that. So some of the other new Canon cameras supposedly coming out this year or early next year are the Canon R7, which should be an APS-C size Canon camera, also a Canon 1600D, and that one I believe also should be an APS-C size or Super 35. And then there's also a uh, more affordable, it's a, what was that again? It's a GX1, a G1X. There's also a more affordable Canon G1X Mark IV, I believe. And I'm not sure of any prices or any specs on these things. We'll just have to keep an eye out and I'll report that news or rumor as soon as I see it. On to the firmware. So Canon is releasing firmware for at least three cameras. I'm not sure the exact day when it's coming out, but it should be out momentarily if it isn't already out. You might want to keep a watch for that. If you haven't uh, signed up to a Canon newsletter or something, maybe do that. You can check to see if there are any new Canon updates on the Canon support page, canon.com. Just go and navigate to your uh, camera, to the model that you have, and then go over to the firmware tab. And then from there, you should be able to find out you have to check your firmware version inside the camera. So some of the new features for the new Canon firmware is a C-Log update for all the cameras, new codecs for 4K, and the R5 and 1DX will also be getting a new Cinema RAW option, which is pretty exciting. And then R5 will have a 1080p, 120 frames per second option now. And I think there may be other things that weren't covered, and I'm not sure if this was a rumor release or an actual press release, but you can check for any more features on their website. And in other news, AMD has released the 6700 XT video card, and you better hurry up and get one, and there's none left. You missed it, too bad. They're gone. So that takes care of that. No, I'm just joking. But the AMD 6700, honestly, it's kind of a, I don't really understand why they keep releasing graphics cards right now because there is a definite uh, silicone transistor shortage right now and uh, they all know it, but they keep putting them out anyway. And then scalpers grab them up, miners grab them up. Prices are ridiculous. The MRSP for this camera should have been Four, the MRSP for the AMD 6700 XD should have been $479 US, but you're more likely to find it for between $850 to $1600 US. That is right, you heard me correctly. In Canada, however, I have noticed that it is a little bit more available. There aren't any tariffs like they have in the States here in Canada, so, so you might be able to pick it up for a couple hundred dollars cheaper. If you're lucky, a store might actually have it in stock. And apparently they were supposed to keep having limited stock. So keep checking back, keep checking back often, have your finger on that button and get ready to press it. And that's all the news I have today. So I hope you guys come back next week and check it out. And I hope to have an even bigger, more rounded up show. I'm having a little bit of technical difficulties getting started, but hey, at least I've gotten started. 
and you guys are going to love it. So I'm just going to keep kicking it out there and out there and just throwing it and just whipping it and just got all kinds of stuff is just coming at you until, well, I don't know, there'll be a few things anyway. See you later.